in Tripoli Forest, the capital. Paula, good evening to you. Now, there were more strikes and fighting overnight. What is the situation in Libya now? Bring us up to date, if you will. Well, what we're hearing from the coalition forces is that they've hit 124 targets. They're saying that the operation has been successful, that they've stopped the ground advancement of Gaddafi's troops, and that for two days now, his air force has been unable to take to the skies. We're also hearing that the no-fly zone is now being extended westwards and southwards over this country. But at the same time, there is intensive fighting in Misrata. It's the last rebel-held town in the west of this country. It's about 200 kilometers to the east of the capital capital city of Tripoli. We're hearing reports that Gaddafi's men have completely surrounded the town, that they've cut off all supplies of electricity, fuel and water. We're hearing reports that at least seven people have so far been killed today, Monday, that some of those Gaddafi men are in the city centre in civilian clothing. And this is raising alarm bells over the whole question of sleeper cells being activated. We're also receiving very worrying reports that civilians have been brought in from other cities and towns to act as human shields against any possible coalition airstrikes. This is in stark contrast to the town of Benghazi, which was the focal point of fighting for much of the past few days and weeks. That is the rebel stronghold in the east. But rebels there saying that they now are leaving the town, advancing westwards and trying to recapture some of the towns and cities that they lost in fighting. Paula, there's been some confusion too about Muammar Gaddafi's whereabouts. What are the latest reports about him tonight? Well, nothing's been heard from Gaddafi himself since Sunday when he gave a 15-minute address to Libyan state television. He did not appear on camera, but he was very defiant in that address, saying that he would not step down and again calling this international response illegitimate. We are hearing from coalition forces that Gaddafi himself is not the target. This is despite the fact that they hit his compound on Sunday night. But here on the ground, there's a growing confusion in terms of what is the end game of this international operation. The rebels are increasingly calling for some kind of air cover as they move westwards, as they advance back over territory they've lost. And no doubt the international community, if it says it is there to protect the peace, will need to respond to those calls in some kind of a manner. But that response might see innocent civilians being killed. So there's that kind of tension here. And it certainly is only made more confusing by some of the statements we saw coming out of Britain today. There we saw the British military saying that Gaddafi remains a legitimate target because he is the head of the army here. Here. Now, at the same time, the questions in terms of how this will end are being answered here by saying either in a stalemate or in some kind of a failed state where you would see the rebels perhaps holding onto power in the east and Gaddafi remaining onto power in the west. But people are asking the question whether indeed this is in the best interests of Libya. All right, Paula, thank you for bringing us up to date there. Paula Sleer in uh, Tripoli. And uh, it's live. Marino, uh, what's pushed Russia into calling this meeting now then? As you mentioned, Russia did call for this meeting uh, for the UN Security Council. They will be meeting behind closed doors. What pushed Russia to do so is a letter that the Security Council received from the Libyan Foreign Minister uh, calling for this meeting. According to the letter, uh, Libyan officials say that a, a barbaric bombing campaign has been launched on their country ever since the Security Council adopted a resolution uh, last week, Thursday, Friday, allowing for the international community to impose a no-fly zone over Libya and paving the way for military intervention. Now, Libyan officials say that uh, the bombs have not stopped, possibly even escalated, uh, that this resolution that was adopted could potentially be a violation of international law, and that uh, it, this has made the situation uh, much, much worse than it was before the no-fly zone was imposed. The Libyan official did write to the Security Council saying that the U.S. and uh, some European allies are taking uh, extensive advantage of measures that were given to them by uh, dropping uh, bombs and targeting uh, locations that are unnecessary. And as a result, uh, civilians in Libya are, are, are getting hurt, if not killed. Um, so this is obviously a pressing uh, issue and matter of concern for the international community, particularly when you consider that five of the 15 uh, Security Council members abstained for, from voting for this resolution because they were very much unsure whether or not military intervention would help ease the, up, uh, the growing conflict that's taking place and the violence taking place right now in Libya. And Marina, what Washington insists, doesn't it, is playing a supporting role, but so far the U.S. has been at the vanguard of the military operation over Libya with American generals in command. Why this contradiction? 
That's right. Uh, what is being said by uh, officials in Washington and what is playing out of uh, the world to see is quite different. There's quite a contrast. Uh, um, the Pentagon says that they are very happy with the strikes and the strikes that they've taken part in. The U.S. has taken part in, and the Pentagon believes it's been uh, the strikes have been very f effective in uh, in pushing, putting stress on Muammar Gaddafi and uh, his supporters. But as of Sunday night, according to published reports, U.S. and uh, and Britain have fired a total of 124 Tomahawk cruise missiles. Uh, we do know that among many of the targets was uh, Muammar Gaddafi's compound in Tripoli. Uh, there have been various reports of the amount of civilians that have been injured and or killed due to the ongoing strikes that uh, that have been played out by the U.S., France, and Britain, strikes that are continuing. And, uh, and it's not clear uh, whether or not uh, the European forces will, will move in on the ground. The U.S. says that there will not be any ground troops that will be moving in on Libya. But we should remind our viewers that this resolution that was adopted included the phrase, all measures necessary to protect the civilians in Libya. So what will come next? Uh, nobody knows, but that is a topic that will be discussed within the Security Council later on today. OK, Marina Portnaya, thanks for bringing us up to date from New York there. Uh, more discussions. Go Very good evening to you. Now, the People's Revolt in Libya was breaking against the onslaught of Gaddafi's forces, wasn't it? Will this foreign intervention put the revolution back on course, do you think? What's your view on that? Do you know, I don't believe that uh, Sarah Flanders can hear me. Let's just to check one more time. Sarah Flanders in New York, okay. uh, can you hear me? It's Kevin Owen in Moscow here. We did a little sound yes, check I with can you just now. now. Yes. Just checking okay. it's back with you. Great. Um, I, I was just saying to you, uh, uh, Sarah, the People's Revolt in Libya w was breaking against the onslaught of Gaddafi's forces. Do you think this foreign intervention will put the revolution back on course? Well, this has nothing to do with putting the revolution on course. This is a colonial war. Libya has the largest reserves of oil on the African continent, and U.S., British, and French bombing, destruction of Libya are meant to gain total control of that and not in any way to help any of the forces in Libya, both for the government or against. And regardless of what you think about the government or of the opposition, this attack will be devastating for all the people of Libya. In the same way that war in Iraq and Afghanistan, the people paid a horrendous and are still paying a horrendous price. But it appears that Gaddafi wouldn't ever listen to argument. What else could be done to free his people from a despot like that? U.S. bombardment is meant to destroy any struggle throughout the Arab world. It's meant to set it back, and if there was the lightest humanitarian concern in any of this, it would also be addressing the people's struggle in Bahrain, in Yemen. It would be addressing the Israeli bombardment of Gaza. Of course, they don't talk about any of those things. The Saudi-backed invasion of Bahrain, the, the U.S.-backed Saudi invasion of Bahrain, they don't address any of that. So this is not meant to help the people of Libya. It's meant to take a time when there is uncertainty, destabilization in Libya, and enforce an entire new colonial regime on the region and also to push back the Arab revolutionary upsurge. That's what they want to do. They want to use shock and awe again to demoralize a population that is in motion throughout the Arab world. Well, and they want to ensure secure lines of oil and natural gas, which Libya has in great supply. Well, let's talk about this operation and how it might be going. I'm sure you've got some views on that. Uh, we're hearing tonight that Norway's recalled its fighter jet, citing confusion as to who's in charge of the operation. What is your view on how this operation is playing out now? Well, this operation is really uh, very much like the war in Iraq, where they said it was shooting fish in a barrel. There's no weapons that Libya has that really can stop an onslaught like this that the Libyan government has. Uh, and the, the opposition is a whole assortment of uh, organizations and individuals. So when you have the firepower coming from aircraft carriers and jets and cruise missiles just blasting into Tripoli and also lots of other sites throughout Libya, that is not in any way meant to help any of the forces in Libya. And just to say also that the overwhelmingly, the 
people of the U.S. are against this. In the latest polls, they're talking about 76, 78 percent of the population against this newest U.S. war, a war that was not even debated or discussed in Congress, uh, a war that is in every sense illegal and meant to uh, destroy the people of Libya Sarah, as a whole. Sarah, another thought that we'd, that we'd welcome from you, some people suggesting that situations like we're seeing in Libya now just breed terrorist groups like al-Qaeda. Is, is the coalition not just causing problems for the future, do you think? Well, very much so. These attacks are the essence of terrorism. You can imagine for the civilian population on the ground, totally defenseless against this. This is the essence of terrorism, attacks on unarmed civilians who have no way of protecting or defending themselves. So when they say later this gives rise to terrorism, this is terrorism. All right, uh, anti-war and social justice activist Sarah Flanders on the line from New York tonight. Thank you.